Hi there, me again, your friendly neighborhood humble stroke assaulter, and we are joined by Crash, the Wonderbird. That his name is Crash. Um, a couple of people asked me what's his name. His name is Crash. Um, why is his name Crash? Well, I didn't name him. Um, Crash, it's because he's graceful on the downstroke. <laughs> so, we're going to discuss something today that, Mom and Dad, you might not want to be in the room for this, so you might want to leave, because this is going to get awkward. We're going to discuss sex after stroke. Right, so I'm going to try to keep this G-rated as best possible. Um, anatomically correct term names may come up. And we're just going to, if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. And me and my co-host here are going to discuss sex after stroke. So people get involved in these messy things called relationships. And relationships eventually lead to intimacy. And intimacy eventually leads to naked. Yeah, no, intimacy. That's where, like, you implicitly trust someone else. No, don't, no, that's attached, right? Um, and then intimacy leads to nakedness, and nakedness leads to stroke. No, sorry, nakedness leads to sex. Sex does not lead to stroke, right? So let's just talk about sex after stroke. So mom and dad, if you're still here, yeah, I'm not responsible. Um, so... Let's just talk about a few basic realities. One, sex is highly unlikely to cause a stroke. In fact, many studies have shown that sex will almost never cause a stroke. So let's just get the first elephant out of the room. I'm afraid of either dying during sex after my stroke, or I'm afraid of killing my partner after their, their stroke. Probably not likely. I mean, so go get your game on. For those of you that have been waiting just to hear that, you can check out now and run to whatever space in you, that's private that you want to do whatever you're going to do. For everyone that isn't completely horny and has been waiting to have sex just to hear that, we're going to carry on. Okay. So basically, I'm going to include all the research and the links that I've included down below, like I've done for the other videos that I've done research for. And so that way, if you know, it's just not me being a talking head and pon pontificating. So couple things we got to talk about. One, strokes impacted how you relate to your body, how you relate to your world, um, how you relate with your emotions. So you can be medically fragile, you can be physically fragile, you can be emotionally fragile. All of that's going to impact your entire world. Like, let's, let's just be honest here. All of that's going to impact your entire world and how you relate to it, how you interact with it. Right? But there's no reason to live in fear. No reason, no reason at all to live in fear about this. So, it just means you're going to have to learn to improvise, adapt, overcome, and persevere, right? That's all that really means. You're just going to have to learn to find a way around it, right? There's a solution to this problem, right? So and we'll, I'll help you get there as best I can, right? No, I'm not coming to your house to help out. No, that's not, that's not a thing. That's not what I'm talking about. So first off, right, people are afraid there's going to be another stroke during sex. Well, fun fact, no, right? We'll get into caveats later right so no that you're not going to stroke out during sex right so then you're going to have some physical limitations you may have numbness you may have stiffness you may have weakness you may have tightness you may have pain you may have altered sensations you may have mobility fatigue incontinence right there are going to be physical differences because of your stroke i had a left brain parietal lobe stroke which means my right hand side was a little bit weak um, i have problems walking still occasionally i still have foot drop um i had um a little bit of weakness, um, like motor grip strength weakness on my right hand side. Um, so you may have some physical changes that you may have to find a way to overcome, right? Uh, and we'll get into more about that later, um, about strategies of how to get around it. So there may be some physical accommodations you may have to make. Um, you may not have the same frequency. You may not have the same level of activity or or or, or um, energy during activities. Um, so, you know, that's something else that you may have to work through. Uh, you also may have, and you, you will have, um, emotional fragility and emotional fluctuation. You, you are going to have periods, no, no, trust me, I cry a lot now. It's not a cool thing, but it's a stroke thing. Um, you're going to, you're going to, this is going to change how you think and feel about yourself 
there are moments after your stroke you're going to be frustrated, irritable, sad, angry. Um, you know, you're gonna you may have depression or anxiety. Um, all of these emotional changes can impact about how you feel about yourself, how you feel about your partner, um, how you feel about the level of intimacy, in, in, intimacy with your partner, right? Now, if you end up in a position where you are suffering from depression or anxiety, you need to stop what you're doing immediately and run to a mental health professional and get their help. If you need something, you need to say something, right? So if, if you're on your chin strap and you're in a position in your life where you need help, right, you need to run immediately to get that help, right? So because you're emotionally fragile, you might not feel all that pretty. You might not feel all that desirable. You might not feel all that sexy, right? Because you've got all these physical changes, right? <clears throat> you've got all these emotional changes. You're still trying to relate to your own body and your own brain. And sometimes you're trying to tell your brain and body to do things. And it's just not working out for you, right? All of the physical changes and the emotional changes can now impact your relationship. They, yeah, no, they can. It'll create relationship issues. It will. Totally will. Right? So here's where you're going to need to sit down with your intimate partner um, and you're going to need to have an open and honest conversation about where you're at physically, where you're at emotionally, and, and sort of sexually where you see yourself, right? It's going to require some some adaptation. It, it just is. Um, right? So, because think about it. You're having to ask an adult partner to help you with things that you've been doing since you're between five and seven without any major stumbles, like tie your shoes, put on socks, cut your food, help you get dressed, um, help up and down stairs, whatever, right? Things that you've been able to do for the majority of your life, you now need to turn to a partner and go, can you help me? Like, like you've got to check your pride at the door and go, I can't put on my shoes today. Can you help me? And you don't feel so sexy at that moment. And then for the partner, right? Is that going to change how they perceive the person that had the stroke? No, it could. It could could definitely change their perceptions, right? You probably didn't think about that, right? It could change their perceptions. It, it really, really could. It could change their perceptions on, do I find this person desirable? You know, do, you know, unfortunately, a stroke can be the death of a relationship, right? Or relationships, because, you know, that's a lot of baggage that didn't exist 10 minutes ago, right? Um, so it could cause some detriments <clears throat> to the relationship, right? And, you know, are they worried about hurting you? Are they, are they worried about you stroking out while they're having sex with you? Um, you know, so again, things might have to be a little bit more planned than they were before. Um, you may not have the same level of spontaneity you had before. Um, positions or activities you used to enjoy are either not enjoyable or a complete no-go. Like, I just do not have the ability to do that. So at that point, you know, that can drastically change how your relationship works, right? And, and if it changes how the relationship works, it's going to change your sexual relationship inside that relationship. That's why it is my suggestion that any couple that is going through the stroke journey, you go to couples counseling. You get yourself to counseling, do five or six sessions, or as many as the counselor thinks you need to do. Just just check it out, right? Make sure everything's copacetic. Now, <clears throat> let's talk about sexual dysfunction. There are going to be times where either due to your stroke itself, due to the medication you're on, due to um, other underlying medical conditions that were discovered because of your stroke, like, did you not know you were diabetic? Like, did you not know that? Did you not know you had a heart condition? Did you not know, like, or because of conditions that have become due to the stroke, like, now you have seizures, <clears throat> right? Um, now, because of your medications, you're unable to either get aroused or maintain arousal, right? You know, so there may be... issues that have been discovered or created because of your stroke, which might take a bit of extra accommodation, right? However, 
before you begin any sexual encounter, you're going to advocate you talk to your clinical team. You talk to your doctor, your neurologist, cardiologist, any any doctor that's a, a legitimate doctor, um, not meaning not a chiropractor, uh, about where you are physically, where you are neurologically, where you are um, like with your cardio, <clears throat> all of that. Make sure your body, your heart, your, your brain, they're all physically ready and capable for sex, right? Now, the level of sexual interest will, again, fluctuate uh, and during your post-stroke journey. You're in the hospital, odds are you're not getting jiggy with it. <clears throat> Let's just, odds are, some people may have, right? And kudos to you. Um, but you may not be getting jiggy with it in the hospital. That That is a distinct possibility. Um, it's not very conducive to privacy or privacy. Um, it's, you know, there's a lot of machines that go ping and everything else. Um, if you're in a pre-established relationship, you know, that's one thing. If you're just starting to date after your stroke, that's another. Because <clears throat> not only are you starting to navigate getting to know another human being, but now you've got to like, hey, by the way, I had a stroke. So <clears throat> that can create a new set of obstacles to overcome. So let's just talk about getting down and dirty, right? So you decide you found a human that you like mentally, intellectually, physically, aesthetically, sexually. You found a human that you want to get naked, right? So you check that box off. And then you get their consent to get them naked. Check that box off. And then you get them naked. Check that box off. And then you go to a suitable private location where you can do fun, fun, naughty time. Okay, great. <clears throat> so you've agreed and they've agreed that we're both going to consent to getting naked and doing naughty things. Perfect. What about now you need to consider about the physical limitations? Are there positions that just don't work? Are there positions that you used to enjoy that just don't work? Are there positions that you kind of have to use as a default now? Um, due to some of your mobility issues, uh, stiffness, proprioception, balance issues, what have you, um, you're concerned about your physical stability. So here's where you're going to engage your clinical team again. You're going to go back to your physiotherapist and your occupational therapist and have a, just have a conversation. Like, listen, I kind of want to have sex, but I got to know how to do it safely because I kind of suck at certain things. I just realized how that sounded. Um, I'm having difficulty getting into certain positions, right? Or whatever. They should be able to provide you <clears throat> positions that may work with your limitations, right? And then you and your partner will have to have that conversation on how that's going to work and look like, right? And then... This, again, once you've started the sexual relationship and you're actually having regular fun, fun, naughty time, <clears throat> you need to have check-ins with your partner, right? And they don't need to be concerned about, you know, stroking you out. I just realized how that sounded. You having a stroke during sex. Um, they don't have to worry about, you know, things that are happening either during or after, right? Um, you're going to get that after sex wobbly body feeling, right? Um, that's normal, right? But it's going to be a slightly different sensation, at least in my experience. Um, you're going to get a headache after sex, or you could get a headache after sex. Again, probably not a bad thing. Um, but keep in mind, headaches come with strokes. They're kind of free. You know, they, they, it's kind of like a, a throw-in. Um, you might feel extremely exhausted and fatigued after sex. Um, so... Again, here comes time to talk with your partner. Um, and just be open with your partner. And if something appears to be going south, don't be afraid to maybe need a safe word. Right? Let's just be realistic here. You, you, you may feel scared at times being involved in, an, in a sexual encounter after your stroke. Or your partner may be afraid. You, you may need to develop a safe word. Um, so if one of you thinks something negative might be happening, right? Um, and someone's health might be in je jeopardy. You may need to create a safe word. And 
and you guys come up with whatever that is, you know. Um, you don't want to use something like dragon slippers because there's too many syllables. Um, but then again, how often is that going to come up in, during sex? Yeah, well, again, come up with a safe word um, that probably won't come up during a sexual or encounter. Dragon slippers might work. It just might be too difficult to spit out. Um, pineapple, banana, whatever. Um, yeah, come up with a safe word. So if you think that something untoward is happening, you can use a safe word. You can stop all activity, kind of, you know, regroup and figure what's going on and determine if we're going to continue on or not. <clears throat> but always just be open and honest with yourself. Be open and honest with your clinical team. Be open and honest with your partner, right? Because you can still have a fulfilling life after your stroke. There's no reason to, to live in fear, right? Um, and once you start having sex, Again, you may need to go back to your doctors and, and, and clinical team and have conversations. Well, well, this happened and it was great, or this happened and it sucked. And that's just normal. That's just completely, totally, 100%, absolutely normal. There's just nothing you can do about that. So, great news is, sex after stroke definitely can be a good thing. Sex after stroke can be a daunting thing. But you know what? It's not going to kill you. At least it shouldn't. <clears throat> um... And on that note, if you happen to like what you've been watching for almost the last seven months, please like, share, subscribe. Um, if you happen to know someone going through their own post-stroke journey, please share with them. Uh, they may get something out of it or someone that's, that's supporting someone going through a post-stroke journey, please share with them as well. Um, if uh, you know you want to reach out to me directly, you can email me at uh, strokeassaulter at gmail.com. I say again, strokeassaulter at gmail.com. And if you happen to notice either in yourself or someone around you, the signs or symptoms of a stroke, which are someone that immediately fears befuddled or confused. They're just out of nowhere. They just don't know really what's going on. Someone with vision problems. They can't see out of one side. They see grayscale. They see stars, whatever. Someone that um, has facial droop. Uh, they have an inability to raise both arms equally effectively or at all. They can't smile equally effectively or at all. They have slurred, stuttering speech, inappropriate word usage for situation or context, general body weakness, weakness on one side, inability to maintain their own body weight. Please immediately place that person in a position of comfort and dial 911. Something so simple can save a life.